haunting of Coffin Hollow and the verifiable truth behind it. The patchy valley fog that has been coming off the hills early in the morning and rising up very late in the night sets up the atmosphere for the unknown. You got this phenomena on the hills, quote the folklorist Dr. Judy Byers. Coffin Hollow exists on a winding stretch of road between Watson, modern day Mononga, formerly Briartown, and follows Booth's Creek a little ways beyond toward Eldora, formerly Bobtown. A dark, somewhat isolated little valley in the depths of the shadows of these ancient hills. Being right over the hill from where piles of coffins once stacked the streets of Monongah, waiting to bury the hundreds of bodies removed from the mines after, after the Monongah mining disaster of 1907, you might think that played a part in the naming of the hollow. But you'd be wrong. The legend of the coffin rider of Monongah predates the mining disaster and gets its roots from the horrors of the Civil War. According to the legend, a Confederate soldier was taken prisoner by Union troops during Jones's Confederate raid on Fairmont in April of 1863, led by Confederate General William E. Jones. That much is historical fact. Now, according to the story, the Confederate man had been shot in the leg during the raid and was unable to keep up with the other raiders headed out of town captured with a few other Confederate stragglers by Union soldiers, a Union captain recognized the ill-fated soldier as a man who had shot and killed his brother during the raid. Upon recognition, the captain took revenge by shooting the man in the head. The soldier was buried in the local cemetery, located near the mouth of an eerie little hollow. About the close of the Civil War, Hatter, Sam Cooper, lived at Briartown. During the winter, when he couldn't farm, he set traps for small fur-bearing animals such as fox, coon, skunk, mink, muskrat, and possum. One day, while going over his trap line on Booth's Creek near the cornfield, where previously a Captain James Booth was killed by Shawnee Indians, he found a very fine fur hat sticking in the crack of some rocks. It was new and had a small bullet hole through the rim, through the side of the hat, and sweatband, but there was no hole to show that it had come out on the other side. Samuel took the hat home and reported what he had found so the owner could come and get it, but no one ever claimed it. It was rumored that a Pennsylvanian coal hauler had been murdered around there. A short time after Cooper found the hat, Mrs. Hess Bender, who lived near Bobtown, modern-day Eldora, was going home and stopped for a drink of water at the Smith's house, who lived about half a mile below where the hat was found. Mrs. Smith met her, and supper was about ready, so she asked Hess to come in and have supper with them, which she did and then started on home. She was gone about half an hour when she came back to the Smith's, said she had forgotten her bonnet and could not do without it. Then, looking pale and shaken, she told them that she was going along about the middle of the stretch of road that lies beyond the edge of the woods on top of the creek's bank. She saw a coffin with a man sitting in it rise up from the upper side of the road. She said that it came up about as high as her head, went quartering across the road, and disappeared over the creek bank. She said she was scared and had come back to stay all night. It was said that Isaac Kuhn, an old farmer living a short distance away, saw the same thing, and he said it went over the creek bank, about where the hat had been found. Then two women who lived near Bobtown saw the coffin and man. Several others reported that they had seen it and it always came up from the same place on the upper side of the road crossed the road and went over the creek bank at the same place and was always seen about the same time in the evening. Meanwhile, the Union captain who had his revenge on the man who killed his brother during Jones's raid moved to the Briartown community 
after the war and began courting a woman in the nearby community of Watson. Now the road between the two, Old Monongah Road as it is called today, is a curvy and hilly roadway and was certainly not well lit back in the 1860s. One evening, as the officer traveled near the hollow and cemetery where the rebel was buried to visit the woman, he heard a strange noise followed by a blood-curdling cry of the Confederate rebel yell. When he turned around, the captain saw the man he had killed riding his coffin right at him. Some sources say the coffin rider was a Confederate soldier's ghost, while others claim it was his skeleton. Looking up the hill and seeing the skeleton of the man he murdered riding through the trees on his coffin, the officer ran for his life back toward Briartown. The chase continued until the captain reached the mouth of the hollow, which would become known as Coffin Hollow due to this tale, and the coffin rider stopped. Shaken, the captain made it safely home and told his friends about the incident. The legend says that for months, this happened each time the captain went through the hollow. According to multiple sources, the captain was later found dead in the hollow by his friends. The West Virginia Press Association says the captain had been shot in the head by an old, previously used bullet. Having heard the tale of the vengeful coffin rider from their now dead friend, those who found him went to the cemetery and dug up the soldier. When they opened the coffin, they found the Confederate soldier's skeleton with no bullet in the skull from the fatal gunshot as there should have been, but they did allegedly find a revolver in the skeleton's hand and it was still smoking. Some say the vengeance stopped after the captain's death. However, residents over the years who entered Coffin Hollow have reported seeing the soldier still riding his floating coffin through the area. About 1874 or 1875, on a Saturday, several boys from Monongah and Rhea Chapel were at Boothsville playing baseball. A new road had been made up the creek, but the old road was still open. In the evening, Tom Rhea, Barney Whaling, and Will Barnes were coming from the ball game on horseback and took the old road where it was shorter to their homes. Tom was a few steps in front of Barney and Will. Barney called to Tom and said, Say, Tom, right along here someplace is where that dead man lives. Yes, bragged Tom, and I wish I could see him. I would whistle for him to dance. Just then, the coffin and man came up the side of the road. Tom's horse saw it, reared it up, and whirled around to run. Tom was a good rider, or he would have been thrown. Barney and Will watched the coffin and man cross the road and disappear over the creek bank. Whaling lived at Rhea's chapel, and Barnes went there to stay all night. They got to talking about how far the horse Tom was riding had jumped. The next morning, being Sunday, they went back to see. The horse tracks were plainly visible. They measured the tracks and all claimed that the horse had jumped 19 feet. And now this may all sound like a wild folk tale, but I've researched the names of witnesses and facts of these events. From old censuses and graveyard records and other sorts of records, I found that Samuel Cooper was a farmer as well as apparently a fur hat maker. Hesse, or Hesse, short for Hester, Shaver was the daughter of Jacob and Tabitha Shaver, and while she married Henry Y. Bender, becoming what they called Hess Bender, but it was really Hesse Bender. Eventually, she moved away, but her parents are still buried in the Martin Cemetery in Eldora, back then Bobtown. Isaac and Nancy Smith live down the road from them, and Isaac Smith is also buried in the Martin Cemetery. 
Isaac Kuhn was actually a farm laborer. As for the boys, Barney Lee Whaling ended up marrying Sarah Jane Shaver and moved away. Thomas Jefferson Rhea was a farm laborer who moved out of state. The one name I wasn't sure about was Will Barnes because there are several local William Barneses born about that time period. Nor could I find any references to a Rhea Chapel, although there is now a Rhea Church located just a stone's throw away from the cemetery where the Confederate soldier was buried. And as for the horse jumping 19 feet, that sounds a bit far-fetched when it comes to horse jumping. But I found that the world record was set clear at 28 feet. According to the local Thomas M. Leeper, writing back in 1950, he wrote, all the old people living around there have passed on, and I have not heard a word about the man in the coffin for more than 50 years. So what was it? A vengeful ghost? A restless spirit? A warning from the other side? Although the march of time carries on, it's become evident to folklorists that the ghoulish, ghastly, and otherworldly maintains a solid footing in cultures all over the world, although these tales may still hold the most prevalence in Appalachia. Coffin Hollow was born out of tragedy, specifically the bloody American Civil War, through which West Virginia itself became a state. We've had cases where brother fought against brother in the Civil War, folklorist Dr. Byers said. You can go through cemeteries and you will see at these grave sites that one brother fought for the North and one for the South. What a terrible tragedy that is in itself, is it not? Traditionally, West Virginia has been clouded in an isolation, Byers said. It's a lay of the land with the mountains and hills and darkness and shadows that plays upon one's imagination. The topography and geography of an area like this is rich in storytelling traditions. It has now been about 125 years since the last reported sighting of the Coffin Rider, but if you dare walk the old Monongah Road down to the hollow in the evening, listen closely. And if you hear a rebel yell, or see a pale, skeletal man on a coffin, run. You may be his next victim.